Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to today's video. Today's video is, I don't want to say it's somber in tone, it's just really unfortunate and it's honestly, it's something I've been delaying for a long time. I don't even necessarily want to do this because I feel like when I do this, all I'm going to do is just kill this plant, but we're going to do it anyway. I've just basically filmed a repot with me, right, and we're on to the next video today to film. So this is why I look similar, if you've seen that already. Depends when this is coming out. Someone asked me about this guy in the background and they basically said, hey, we'd love to see that big albo up close. And I thought, oh, no, you would not. No, you would not. Because this albo behind me, it's Monstera albo, by the way, it's looking horrific, horrific. So I'm actually going to show you it today because we're going to cut it and we're going to cut it not all the way down, but maybe a lot of the way down to try and get some propagations to grow myself a new plant, which will probably take forever to grow, but I'm kind of willing to try. Hopefully the cuttings that we take today do not rot because I'm going on holiday in a week's time for two weeks. So that's it's going to be two weeks of completely unassisted albo potential rot. And if it all rots, it don't have a lot of albo left. I don't have a lot of albo left. I don't want to pay the prices in the shops. That's kind of insane. I think we can all agree. The prices are still really bad. And I know that a lot of the variegation on that is actually really good quality compared to a lot of the stuff in shops now. It's actually such an old albo, and you will see this when we go up to it in a moment. There are, I think there are three vines. Let me have a look. One, two, three, four. This Monstera has four vines around the plant. When was the last time you saw a Monstera in a shop, shop bought? that had four vines around it. Four vines. Oh my God. So there's a lot of Monstera there. There's a lot of Monstera. So what I need to do today is cut it. Maybe throw away the green, I don't know. Maybe the green leaves, I might cut it down to just wet sticks and grow from there just to save some space because I'm quite full. But I'm gonna show you the whole thing in its full glory. And I'm gonna do my best to show you me cutting it on camera. Don't know how well that'll go. There is only you and me here. There's him and a pair of scissors and that's about it guys so i'm gonna do that and we will get propping and we will pot up and we'll just see where this takes us so genuinely i hope it's not so bad but spoiler alert this plant is extremely crispy it's grown all over the place because it got quite badly burnt in was it 2020 basically i wasn't at home much in 2020 i used to live in manchester and i used to have to travel here and it was about an hour out but i spent so much time here in 2020 doing the unit basically it got underwater it went crispy it went nasty and it's never been the same since and honestly that genuinely genuinely makes me feel really sad because i go on and on and on about how ridiculous albo is in you know stores and stuff like that it doesn't stop me liking the plant i still absolutely adore this plant I genuinely do. It's really sad to see it like this. And I don't know how bad it looks right now, but honestly, it's it's pretty bad. <sighs> let's uh let's go see this lovely big elbow that was once absolutely gorgeous, let's not lie. Right, so now you're seeing it on video. So I'm gonna take you around a quick tour. So we've actually got the top of the plant here. Sorry if it flashes, it's just the lights. We do have some burn. We have some burn all over here. We actually have a really good lean on. Can you see this? Where it's just literally just gone rogue because it's been so long since I've done anything to it. Can you see here where it still went on too long and I put a makeshift pole in thinking, hey, it'll be fine. I'll just remove it in three weeks and then we'll sort it. Yep, that happened a hell of a long time ago, as you can probably tell. Around here, all my old beautiful leaves, don't get me wrong, they've been knackered in transit as well, but they're all just, just really sad. Look at all this burn. There's not many leaves that don't have burn on. Really, really, really sad. Even leaves that are mostly green. We have some really nasty symptoms of, to be honest, underwatering and underfeeding. Again, loads of crisp, loads of crisp. Even on the new stuff. Don't get me wrong, it's actually really white, really white. It's just crisp everywhere. Look, it's really quite sad. Look at this. Look at this. This is not a pretty plant, guys. This is honestly why you haven't seen it. I mean, I haven't hidden it from anybody. Obviously, it's, it's in the background of my videos and stuff, but it's really, really not. Ugh, it's just not good times, is it? So I do have, and I, did I take it from that plant? I might have taken it from that plant. I've got some here look some really pretty ones that were like brand new so i've got two there that were already propagating that I took the other day I actually took it so i could do a video with them um and that's about it some of these new ones are looking a bit better but even even then look we've still got some damage so that is the state of the plant let's just try and cut it and get some 
I don't know, some salvageable leaves from it. This is about as difficult as I thought it would be to frame this plant. I had a feeling we wouldn't get it in, so I have accepted that a lot of these are really bad, and to be honest, they just need growing fresh. To be honest, there's, there's not a lot I can do here. Really, what I'm looking to do is we're going to give it a little bit of a trim, probably start working downwards. We will see how we go. Some of it might be chucked out if it's all green. I don't need more all green monstera. I have loads, by the way. I've got some growing up the living wall. I have some growing up the wall over there. I'm not sure on it. But a lot of these nodes, and you might not be able to see, you might be able to see that. I don't know. This is decent. There's a lot of really decent variegation, and that... That is what I'm interested in, because if we get good yield off that, then we will get some beautiful new babies. And then one day, one day, I can make my own beautiful monster again, and it will look like this one once did. Because if y'all saw it a long time ago, you'll know how amazing it was. It was the envy of a lot of people. It was beautiful. So I really want this to happen again. I'm not going to cut it all the way down. I will cut it down quite a way, but I think what's going to happen is, as we go, we're going to get stuck because all these aerials, a lot of them are stuck into the pole. So I don't really know how this is going to work. I feel like I have to reframe you again, because you can't see anything. So I feel like we have to be further out, really. I'm going to start by cutting here, I think. In fact, no, I'm going to cut here. don't know if you can see where I'm cutting, but it's just a big branch, which is essentially this. So we do have... We have some leaves here, and I appreciate this is really hard to say. This is literally, guys, this is why I have not done this. This is exactly why this is the first time this is happening, because the whole thing is a nightmare. But we have a variegated stem. Let me just pop those in between my knees. We have a variegated stem, but we do not have high variegated leaves. That's not to say that we don't have anything on the stems. The best ones are obviously earlier on, before we go through full reversion, and then we just gradually get a bit more crap until we come to the newest leaf, which does have a little bit of variegation on, but not a lot, not a lot at all. That's the newest, that's the one before that. So not the worst at all, but not the best. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to leave this till nearer the end and we will decide what we're going to do because this one's probably going to yield a lot nicer results than earlier ones, but we shall see. So I'm going to very gently put this down Oh, I think, again, you probably can't see the top. See, this is how bloody big this plant is. Can I even move you back? Probably not, you know. Probably not. That's about as good as I can get, guys. So, can you see it now? Oof, sort of. I'm going to just cut here, like that, to show you the top too. Now, this is nicer. It's not spot on, but it's pretty good. This leaf here is probably what I would actually look for on an elbow in terms of the amount of variegation here. And this is a really good time to have this conversation. I say this all the time. When you look for variegated plants, you need a certain ratio, you could say, of variegation. This sour class is not really enough if you want a variegated monstera. You ain't going to be very happy with that. This, however, I think a lot of people would be reasonably happy with. It's not loads, and we will... You know, I will rate different leaves as we go through because I think that could be really helpful. It's a really good learning exercise. And of course, it is my opinion. But this is a lot better. And I think this, I mean, I probably will cut that because this, ha this has a beautiful petiole. Let me see this. Literally, literally, that's quite pretty, isn't it? And because, and this is another thing that you should look for in a cutting or when you're cutting Monstera, don't necessarily just look at the leaf. Because when you grow from it, yes, it's an all right indicator. But what you really want to look at is the node and the amount of variegation in this node. Does it have like one big chunk on one side or is it all the way around? Because if it's all the way around, you're more likely to get something like this. It's a safer bet. What I hope we can get later on, maybe, is a half moon leaf. And I will show you how not so good that is and why. So in terms of this one, let me just show you here, the variegation is kind of kind of all the way around, which is why you've got this. Whereas the node before that, it was all the way around, but it was a lot weaker, see? So that's that anyway. He's quite nice. I do quite like him as a cutting. We'll pop him down as well. Right, let's keep going. I might just do these in single leaves because they're going to end up in single leaves anyway, unless it is literally head cutting. Here's another one. It's a bit crispy, a bit crispy. However, the variegation on the petiole is okay. I wouldn't say that was fantastic. It really depends on where this next node comes from. So if I show you this one, like this. That's how much variegation is on there. This is a node, by the way, this is where the petiole is coming from. Now, a lot of times you need a bud 
in order to get a new leaf. And I do believe you might be able to see this, you might not. Sorry, I'm just pulling off a little bit of old patio. There is a little nodule. If you're wondering what a bud looks like, can you see that there? It might look flat, I'm not sure, but this little part here is a bud and that is where the new leaf will come from. Now, if I look at that, it's right in the middle of some variegation, but I don't feel like it's gonna be as much as that one. I should do this video and I should write on a little tag on each propagation what I think it's gonna turn out like. And if it does, I think that'd be really interesting. I might do that in the next video. So we'll leave that there. He's not bad, he's not bad at all. So this is literally only one vine as well. I don't think I'm gonna be able to cut it all back because it's just gonna be too many cuttings. And you know what I mean? I'm not gonna be able to get down to the bottom. Oh, here we go. So this is where it gets annoying actually. Now you might think, oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Big aerial root, look at that. They're actually a nightmare. They are a nightmare. Because when you cut it and you want to put it into a pot, you're guaranteed to snap it. It already wants to, if I'm honest. It already wants to snap. It's not ideal. Now this is pretty pathetic, this one. However, would you like to see something interesting? So this leaf here, not great. I wouldn't say that was great. I would call that, what, 15%, 10, 15%. It's, it's crap. It's crap. You wouldn't want it. But if I show you the petio, look at that. You see that? There's quite a bit on there. If I just remove this, because that is quite distracting, look. See? There's actually a fair bit on there. We just did not land lucky with the positioning of it. It's all kind of on the back, and it hasn't really translated through. So there's another crap one. But this, honestly, guys, I'm not against cutting these. I'm honestly not against cutting these. So much so, I'm actually going to cut it because they irritate me and it's going to snap in the pot. And what's going to happen is it's going to snap in the pot. I'm going to falsely rely on it thinking it's not snapped. It's going to rot. We're going to have a bad time. You feel me? So I'm going to keep that like that. That alone is going to be a nightmare and it probably still won't plant. Celebi. If you're going to propagate your Monstera, yes, wait for an aerial root, but I honestly, guys, don't wait that long. Just don't wait that long. I, I guess it really depends on what you're going to put it into. The best aerial roots you could possibly want are genuinely things like that one there, that little one, or maybe even an inch longer. And that's all you need. That's all you need. That will be more than enough. And you'll have a better time pot it, uh, potting it up. So do think about that when you're propagating. Another one. Let's do this one. Ooh. Oh, it takes some going. We've got more aerials. Yes, but not as bad. Oh, and this one, funny enough, this is what I'm talking about. This is great. This is like showing you different stages of propagation. So this one has some aerial roots, but look at this. This one has a bud. You see that? So like the other one where I said, oh, that little bit there, that's going to be a bud. Sorry, that's spider web. It is actually spider web. There's nothing on these plants. Where I said before, hey, that's a little bud. That's how it grows out of it. And I appreciate so many people probably know this. Honestly, some people do. But just in case you didn't, that's how that works. So this one, again, not so bad. It's not brilliant, but that's a pass, to be honest, for me. I'd probably want more from it if I was selling it. For myself, yeah, I might want a bit more than that, actually. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's nothing to sniff out that one. That's definitely a pass. Now, I'm going to cut this one because the variegation on this is absolutely amazing. So I want another cut out of this. Like so. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this one, this one is dangerous. It's dangerous because it depends where the new node will come from. Where is it? Is that the bud there? Oh, you know what? It's not dangerous. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be crap when it grows because you might be able to see the node a little bit better on this one because it's a slightly different color. So if I show you that, see this here? This little, little thing, that's the node there. But look at the petiole, look at that. Now you might think, oh yeah, great. Again, it's only as good as where the little node is, usually in my experience. And if the node comes in over here, you might be thinking, oh yeah, it'd be cool over there, wouldn't it? No, probably not. You get an all white leaf and now your cutting's not done, but it's not in a good place. So that one looks like it's going to be great, but on closer inspection, maybe not. Maybe not. This one looks quite decent. Let's try this one. Yep just because it's in a nice place to actually remove it. This one's quite nice. I actually like this one. It's not amazing, but it's okay. Yeah, the bud's in an alright place on this one. So if I show you... It's basically here. Where is it? Yeah, this bit where it sort of changes colour here. There, that's the bud. That one is probably going to turn out quite nice. 
in my opinion. I should really look at this video, honestly, because I don't have time to full on tag them up, but I could probably watch this back and then decide what I'd said about them and just see if I was right, literally. But that one's not so bad. It's easier to plant that one as well. I might just trim a little bit off that there just so it gets in the pot a little bit better. Oh. You know, I could have, I could have just moved this closer because that would feel a lot easier, literally. So we don't have a ton of options other than to just keep cutting. There is actually a really nice one back here, but again, you might not see it. Let's get this one. Gently does it. Yeah, okay. This one I quite like. This, though, this is a nice one. What's the bud going to be like? Oh, this, this one's good. This one's good. And again, it's good because the variation on the leaf is dispersed. And when it's dispersed on the leaf, it is highly likely that it is dispersed around the petiole, right? And this petiole is actually gorgeous. Wait till you see this. This is really pretty. Look at that. All the way around. Look at that. That's so pretty. So the bud we have, you might be able to see it. Hopefully it won't focus on me. Is it going to? I can't tell. There, basically where my nail is, that is where the bud is. So that has got decent chance. Hopefully it's not too much, but it's got decent chance. I like this one. I like this one a lot. So I'm going to leave that. That's my favorite so far. Definitely. Again, I don't want to go too far because I can't go all the way down. We'll do it in another time. I'd rather keep this alive for insurance purposes because if I go on holiday and all of these die, I've got no plant, right? If I'd literally take them all. So we'll only take a couple more. There's a really nice one here. What's that one like there? That one's a bit crap. Let's not do that one. Let's definitely do this one though. Oh yeah. If I gently uh, remove this one. This is... Right, this one is so long, you won't know this, but this one is so long, it is wrapping around the bottom of the pot several times. So I am actually going to cut this, and it is what it is. So I'm actually going to cut it to here, honestly, and be that what it may. So let me try it so you don't have to. So if something goes wrong, guys, at least you know that I did it and not you, and you don't have to do it. Then that's just some of it, literally. That's about... It's my entire arm span that it'll go way out of frame and that's just a small bit the rest of it's just wrapped around the bottom of the pot it's not ideal oh this one's got good promise this one is this one is good can you see there is the bud that's really obvious bud on that one here's a bit of aerial obviously yes i've chopped it and the main part of the leaf that does have some old pesticide on it looks like that that's quite hot we like this we do like this given where that is that's going to be a really nice one that because the bud is going to come out if I show you it this way. Can you see we could have either got lucky or not lucky? But I think we're getting lucky because the bud's on this side. Now, and this is the thing, and because I haven't actually found a half moon, so I will explain this as though it were a half moon, okay? So what I want to explain is this. When you get half moon monsters, yes, it's, it's great. They look gorgeous, right? It's not everyone's thing. It's not personally my thing. And I will explain why that is. So let's just pretend that this is solid white right and therefore when you look down here just pretend this is also solid white okay so just pretend this is half moon so that everything on this side of the plant is white okay now the reason i don't like it is because depending on that half moon bear in mind our bud here is on the white side this is the problem you might get right if you get a badly placed bud on a half moon leaf, and I will explain this in another video because I do think it's important, kind of like a variegation how-to video because this is a bit more impromptu. So you might catch me repeating myself at some point. But depending on where your bud is on your half moon leaf, again, this is the white side, all white, this is all green. The bud is on here, right, at this point in time. Now, luckily, this isn't all white because it means when we do get a leaf, it'll be nice and variegated. But if this was all white on this half of the leaf, the half moon, the likelihood of the new growth being all white is very high. It's very high. And what happens to all white growth, guys? It dies. It dies off. It never lasts. That's not just a monstera thing. That goes for other plants. For example, give me one moment. No plants like to be all white. For example, this guy here looks a bit pathetic, right? This is a philodendron gigantium variegata with a hell of a lot of variegata. And he's not a happy camper. He never has been. He never has been. Why? There's too much white. There's too much white. So sometimes with a half moon leaf, the bud will come in here. Then you're going to get all white growth. It's going to die. Not so good. The flip side is equally as bad if you spend money on a half moon leaf, because the flip side is that the bud will come in on this side. 
and you're very likely to get an all green leaf. And this is not just for Monstera. Again, it's for anything. Florida Beauty are really bad for it because it's, it's actually quite easy to get half moon Florida Beauties. Really, really bad for it. Yeah, they look beautiful. They look beautiful, guys, until you cut them. And that's the thing. If you want to have it for you and it's someone selling something, any plant that is half moon and it's growing, as long as you're not going to cut that, you don't need to worry too much. If you're going to propagate from that, Oh, I wouldn't. Honestly, I wouldn't. If you were buying variegated things to propagate from or you, you just had a, a plan to propagate it in the future, mm, I really wouldn't. This sort of thing is not so bad, but even then, you really want it dispersed throughout the leaf if you want a kind of foolproof way of doing it. But that is a very brief explanation of why half moons aren't good by using that as an example. So theoretically, on this side, on this right side here, well, is it your right or left? I can't remember because the, the camera screen has flipped. But on this side, you might get an all white leaf. On this side, you might get an all green leaf. Literally, I could hold you up about 10 different plants in this shop that I've bought in that have been half moons. I've known the risks and that's happened with. The only time I've avoided it recently is my Philodendron Golden Dragon, which I'm actually amazed that I've managed to avoid that because every other thing I've got, I've had it in Billetai, I've got it in a Thormatophyllum that is somewhere, I think it's just over there. It happens all the time. So please beware of the perils of this. It's not good. It's not good at all. I mean, at the end of the day, do what you want. Your plants, your money, your time, your risk, do what you want. But if you're not sure, then I maybe wouldn't. I want to do, oh, do I want to do one more? Now I'm going to leave this and we'll probably come back to this. So if I just move it back so you can see what I've done. Come on. Oh, that's difficult. Right. How's that? How is that? You just move that down a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Uh, I might not be so much in the frame this time, but hey, at least the plant is. So if you can see now, the plant is probably as tall as me and it is still looking really bad. And there is loads of vines in here. There's actually some nice um, coloured petioles and stems up here. But again, I want to leave it because I've taken a lot of propagations, which I'll try and pick up for you now, which are literally quite a few. And we're going to see how they go. I'm going to cut these individually, I think, and we'll just see. But I'm not expecting a great yield from these. So... It's unfortunate, but hey-ho. Now these, on the other hand, some of these are looking really good. Some of them are looking average, and we will see what happens. I mean, they do look very nice. I'm dropping them everywhere. Give me two minutes. That one is probably my favorite, just because the new leaf is doing exactly what I would hope for. That is probably the epitome of what I'd hope for, the variegation. That new leaf there, that's really, really nice. Some of these are still good, but there is more risk. So that is me trying to save my variegated monstera. Again, I'm not going to pop them up on camera because honestly, it would take ages. I don't think you need to care that much. I will give you an update on them whenever you like, but I'm going to cut them a little bit, for example. Actually, I might leave that one as it is just because it's growing well. That'll be the only one I'll leave as it is because it's a head cutting, I think. But I'm going to pop them up, put them in a tray. <laughs> Hopefully they don't die or rot. It might. These are going to have to be trimmed probably some of these aerials because they're just too long to get in pots. And hopefully one day, one day guys, I will have a beautiful variegated monster again because this guy here is, <sighs> he's not that. He is not that. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you didn't mind the bit of something different, a little bit more casual. Still chatting about what I think about variegation and why and showing you some, some cuttings, some buds, stuff like that. But I hope you had fun anyway. So that is it for today's video and I will see you in the next one. And at some point I will update you on this. So let me know what you think about anything I'd said. Let me know again, I know I've asked this before, what level of variegation you prefer, whether you avoid half moons, what is your opinion on half moons? Do, have you had good experience or have you had the problems that I talked about? Let me know in the comments below. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that you enjoy my content. And if you'd like to subscribe, please feel free to do so. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will love you and leave you. Bye.